paper bag fans again. Um, I know we kind of like Lance kind of told you like what he would had to say about it, but um, this paper bag stuff, man, like I find it funny. I don't know if you could hear me like the, the first time, but the, the paper bag thing, like the fact that this kid wore a paper bag and he, he's pretty close because he's by the Valley Sports Detroit cameras and they tell him, hey, take off the paper bag. Um, one, shout out to him for sneaking a, a bag in. They probably didn't know what it was. They probably they probably thought it was lunch or something. Uh, two, the fact that they Bally said, hey, you need to take that off. You know, it's we don't want it to be on camera. I get it. Bally has to stay positive at all times. They can't say sell the team, even though I think um, if George Blaha said that, I would lose my shit. I would laugh. I was like, I'm, I actually hope Blaha does say that, like the last game of the team. But like, welcome to another exciting night of NBA basketball. Tell the team. Um, <laughs> Oh, man, that'd be hilarious. But I'm, I'm a little off topic, but um, I love it. Uh, shout out to, you know, whatever followers on Facebook for, you know, tagging us in that, saying that they couldn't do it. But that's kind of my two cents on it. I think it's funny. And shout out to him for sneaking a paper bag in. No, it's funny. It reminds me of the early 2000s Lions. And I think it's pathetic that the Pistons organization was like, hey, you got to stop uh, taking that off. I mean, you got to take that off because – you know, you're making us look bad. And they're not, even though the losing streak should be precedent, and that's, everybody, the Pistons organization should be handing paper bags to fans as they come into the arena. That's how bad it is. Everybody should get a paper bag to wear. So don't worry about the paper bag. Worry about the losing streak. And I will say one thing about George Blaha. Wasn't he the one that called out the two kids fighting in the stands? In one of the other games, there were two little brothers, like, punching each other. I don't know if it was him particularly, but, like, the fact that you got, like, two little kids that are probably under the age of 10 just duking it out. Like, imagine taking to your, your kid to a Pistons game. Like, you got to be some kind of sicko to do that because you know they're going to lose. <laughs> the fact that they got them on camera, like, I feel bad because, like, they got put on uh, 15 seconds of fame. I don't know if you guys – know what that is um it's like a a fame they they have like cameras like all across the league and these two little kids like went viral like espm bleach report picked it up of these two kids fighting because joel Embiid was dropped he dropped like 30 on them in the first half do you think the parents are punishing their kids by taking them to a pistons game it's like dude if you guys don't behave we're going to a pistons game and you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna beat me for it i think that's, that's what it is there was a meme, too, of the two kids that were fighting, and they posted a picture of Asar with, like, his arms folded, and he just looked like an angry parent. Just being like, why are you embarrassing me like this? <laughs> Dude, it just cracked me up. Yeah, like, I, I, I do want to show the picture for people that know what I'm talk, uh, we're talking about. So uh, this was on Facebook. Um, Nate Westfield said that they made me uh, take mine off because I was on the tele uh, television side or televised side. Uh, I guess I didn't want the heat. I didn't tell him that we would talk about it for a couple of minutes. Um, it even says still a Piston fan. Like, it, it's not even negative. It's just like a frowny face. It doesn't say, like, Piston sucks, sell the team or anything like that. The uh, fact that they said, hey, we, we, we can't have that on the airwaves, I think it's kind of kind of weak on the Pistons part. Like, embrace the 23-game losing streak. I think you tied the, you tied the Charlotte Bobcats for uh, the most losses. Yeah, and they broke their own team record of 22. So really? now – this team is it. Um, so there's one other topic I want to talk about. We were talking about it before your mic just decided to give out. And it's, I've asked, I'll ask you again. I saw a fan reply to one of James Edwards' tweets, basically blaming James Edwards and the other B writers for the Pistons' struggles and the losing streak. And I thought that was wrong, but it made me start to think. So I'm going to ask you, do you think the media actually has power to elicit change in an organization? You know, I I, I really don't think they do. Um, not Detroit anyways. Um, I was telling you, like, Philly, absolutely. L.A., absolutely. New York, hell yes. Um, 
I, I do want to give Amari Zinko for credit because I did read his piece today because he's saying like, you know, the Pistons are going to have to hit that red button if, yeah. if you know things don't get worse. Like he's the only beat reporter that I will say that's actually, you know, putting his neck out on the line and saying like, Hey, like things need to change. You can't keep, you know, losing. You, you can't, you can't tie the record. God forbid something has to change, whether that's a trade, whether that's, someone getting let go, getting fired. I I will applaud him for that, but I don't think anyone in the Detroit Pistons beat uh, can make a change only because we have an owner that isn't involved as much. We kind of only see him, I've told you, we we see him three times a year. We see him when we we draft our rookies every year, see him at a, a California game, whether that's the Clippers or the Lakers, and then you see him around March and April where the, the media ask him, hey, what went wrong this year? Um, but like I said, he, he's not really around that much. That's why I don't think the media here anyways could really force change. I mean, if you're just writing hit piece after hit piece saying like Tom Gores needs to sell the team, uh, the Pistons need change, the Pistons need to move on from Troy Weaver, then yeah. Um, but I think that beat reporter would probably get taken off the beat because it's too much heat. Because I, I I just can't see a beat reporter doing that. I, I told you last week, there's certain things that beat reporters can't write because of, you know, the PR department. And that's that's a problem that I have, that James Edwards, Omari Sankofa, Corey Woods, and Mike Curtis, all great people. We've got to talk to all of them on this podcast. And we've got to do a show with Omari on the Pistons Pulse earlier in the year. And it's... It sucks that they can't do their job fully because it does seem like they're handcuffed. It it does. I hate to use the word fluff pieces, but sometimes there are pieces that come out where you're like, dude, it's just, what are you trying to say? Because it it seems like there's almost, you're saying one thing, but I know there's something else you want to say. And I feel like if they didn't have the handcuffs on them and they were allowed to write whatever they wanted, because I know there's information they have whether they get it from a source inside the organization, that they probably could write something that might spark something minor in the team and actually cause change, but they can't do it because, you know, there are people telling them, dude, if you do, we're going to, you know, they might get their access revoked. It might be limited, something, you know, where something could cause them not to be able to do their job the way they do it now. And that's just a shame. And it's funny to me that there are some small market teams out there that will complain that the larger markets have an advantage over them. But in order to be in one of those large markets, you got to have thicker skin and you got to be able to handle what the media will come at you. And until you do that, you'll always be a small market. And I don't know, th- th- that that's something that's just been bothering me all week and something I wanted to talk about on this podcast, you know, even though it has really nothing to do with just the Pistons, like how we normally talk about them. But I thought it was something that was important that needed to be said. No, I, I, I kind of feel bad for beat reporters in the aspect of fans at their ass every day. Yeah. Uh, the, the fact that they have to quote tweet, like, uh, I know James gets it. Mike, not so much. Uh, I know Amari gets it. Even, you know, even Corey Woods, who we've had on the show, he, he gets it too. It's just... Fans are really frustrated, and that's usually who they they take it out on is the beat reporters, and they're not responsible um, for any of the free agent acquisitions. They're not responsible for you know overpaying um, for free agents or you know front office executives. Like they're not responsible for anything. All their job is is to report of what they see and what they hear, and they even they can't even do that a hundred percent of the time. So I hope things do get better, though. I really do. I mean, we've been doing this podcast for over a year, and I think we've spent more time talking about uh, draft prospects and what's wrong with this team and why the rebuild has been taking so long, rather than oh, maybe can the Pistons, you know, push for a, a play-in spot. God forbid. I, I can't wait for that day to come. I, I know it's coming. I just don't know when. <laughs> I hope it comes soon. I really do.